You're inside the Mouse Castle with Tim and Anthony. Visit us at themousecastle.com. Follow the Mouse Castle on Facebook and Inside the MC on Twitter. Inside the Mouse Castle is not affiliated with the Walt Disney Company. Soon, you'll understand why. Here's Tim and Anthony. Welcome inside the Mouse Castle. I'm Tim Calloway. And I'm Anthony Reynolds. It is November 23rd, 2015. We are your weekly dose, except when we're, when we're not, of Disney news, information, and commentary. And what do we have coming up today, sir? Uh, we're going to talk about Star Wars and movie theaters, Star Wars at Disneyland. I was going to talk about one of my favorite shows on the Disney Channel. Or is it Disney XD? Is it on Disney Channel? It's on, it, I think it starts on Disney XD and then they also show it on Disney Channel. All right. Well, that show's coming to an end. We'll talk about that later. I'm really bummed about that. And then we'll talk about some things going on over at uh, the East Coast there. That, at that Walt, Walt Disney World. Disney something, something park. Something. I think they have a park there. Yeah. I don't know. Well, that's all next inside the Mouse Castle. What are you drinking tonight, Tim? I am drinking, I have the very last bottle, probably on earth, of <clears throat> Samuel Adams pumpkin batch. I'm, I had one left in the fridge that I grabbed tonight. I say good riddance to pumpkin. Bah! It's Christmas time. Bah, pumbug. Unless you're those atheists over at Starbucks. <laughs> hey, I'm drinking it out of a red bottle. Does that mean anything? I saw those red cups. I'm like, oh, those look really cool. I like those red cups. And then I found out that everybody's outraged about them. Not everybody. Probably, you know, you know like, like, like three like, people. Like two or three guys were outraged by it, but the internet just couldn't let it go. <laughs> the media, man. Ugh. Yeah. Damn media. Anyway, what what are you uh, consuming tonight, sir? I am. Uh, well, I'm hoteling it up right now. I'm uh, uh, in Dallas for work on business here. That's weird. I feel like such an adult. I'm in Dallas for business. It it's only temporary. It, it's uh, only yeah. temporary. Yeah, the um, whole adulting thing. I don't recommend it. I am drinking a uh, New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc from uh, 2014 called Starborough. Picked up at the uh, local uh, 7-Eleven. Wow. They have those in Dallas. Yeah, right down the street. Nice. Yeah. Got some sushi. or No, I had curry tonight, and then I just popped in. Got a Was that also pop. from 7-Eleven? Because that's just frightening. <laughs> no, no. Oh, no. No, no, <laughs> no. Well, I have been a bit backed up, Tim. That might help. <laughs> 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 yeah, for many days to come. Oh, I'm just kidding, Tim. It's been smooth sailing for my bowels. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm happy to hear it. I, I really am, and and I'm sure I'm sure our audience genuinely appreciates it too. I think so. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so anyway, uh, we did not do a show last week, and there were there's a couple of reasons for that. One, I had a death in the family, and life got to be a little little crazy and uh was dealing with I would have just said we didn't do a show for several reasons none of which are your business. Yes, well I could <laughs> I could say that too but I thought I eh, might as well you know call it what it is. Um plus uh, you were just beginning your your travels to uh, Dallas so it just yeah it just it wasn't going to happen last week it's basically what it boils down to. But, uh so we had a little catching up to do and before things got uh, crazy at home I was at uh, Disneyland the weekend, uh, the weekend of the Avengers superheroes half marathon weekend. And I ran all three races that weekend and also managed to sneak into a soft opening of hyperspace mountain. And now you're banned from Disneyland. And now I'm banned from Disneyland because I, apparently I was the only one that got in. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, anyway, it was, it was, it was very exciting. And I know it's, it's kind of old news now cause it's been open for a week, but we can finally, you know, chime in on how good or at least what my impression was of Season of the Force. Ooh, uh, let's hear your impression. What is it? What does uh, it sound like? My, like Hello <laughs> there. I'm pew, 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 pew. Oh, nice. How's that sound? Is that good? That was a good impression. Yeah. <laughs> I cannot do Chewbacca. Do Chewbacca. Yeah, I see you can yeah. do it. I can't. I can't do Chewbacca. Oh, that was a pretty good impression, though. You had the pew, pew, pew. You should it's be a trap. on Saturday okay, Night Live. There you go. Oh. That feels better. It's a trap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I, I will tell you that I, I don't know how exciting it was for everybody 
once season of the four is officially opened and they got to go on hyperspace mountain but i know for the lucky few hundred few thousand i don't know how many people they they got through the line but for for people that got that sneak peek on the uh saturday or no it would have been on the friday uh before uh, season of the force opened i mean it was the the crowd was absolutely giddy and every single group of guests that came off of their ride vehicle you know as they're as they're coming back to the loading area i mean they were cheering they were they were clapping they were you know just just going crazy and everybody was doing that and it was really it was really really fun it's still just a space mountain overlay but what a space mountain overlay if you're going to do it and do it star wars themed they've got every single element of it right and there are some you know youtube videos out there if you want to take a look at them and i know you don't i don't no no and and don't do it don't don't spoil it because there there are a couple of moments in there and we were talking about this before we started recording that there there are there are two specific moments for me uh on on hyperspace mountain where i got just sick yeah i just it was just nauseating it was just disgusting uh no it was just it was just so excited it was just it was just a total star wars geek moment and one is as you're going up the the second lift hill and then another one is like on the second half of of the ride there's there's a particular projection effect that's that's like whoa that's re that's really really cool and but but it's 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 fun <laughs> and what really gets you excited i mean this is just this is just an overlay so i mean you know there there are some restrictions you can only do so much star wars theming in an existing space mountain attraction but they do it so well it gets you really excited for when that time comes that there's actually a star wars ride other than star tours built from the ground up I thought Parks of the Caribbean was Star Tours. Hmm. I know it feels like it, doesn't it? Everything's getting a Star Wars theme. That'd be great. What kind of overlay do you think they could do with Pirates of the Caribbean? I don't know. It's uh, I think a Christmas a one. Christmas. Would be so they lame. need yeah, Pirates of, a Pirates Christmas. There you go. <laughs> I mean, it's so terrible. <laughs> There's no overlay you could do with Pirates. I mean, they did it with the they did it with the Jingle Cruise, and that's that works. That's fun, but it's it's still a stretch. You know, Small World Holiday works. Obviously, Nightmare Before Christmas works, or Haunted Mansion Holiday. But yeah, could you do a Pirates overlay? I mean, I guess you could say they've been under an overlay ever since the Johnny Depp thing. That's true. Yeah, or maybe they should do like, like you know, since they have the skeletons already, do a Dio de los Muertos <laughs> theme. That would work, I guess. Yeah. I, I was on the that vintage Disneyland group uh, on Facebook. And somebody had posted like a photo of Johnny Depp's um, audio animatronic. Like, don't you think this guy's overstayed his welcome? No, I really don't. Not as long I as think, they're still making pirates movies. Hello. I think they. I think that's a, a fine um, overlay that they did there. I. Th I, I don't think. It, I mean, it took away a few things, but you know, I don't care. I, th I, th I thought it was a well done addition to the ride. Well, well, other than taking away the. The, the the girl in the barrel and replacing her with Johnny Depp they didn't really change anything. Oh, uh, they did. The, well, the one thing I will say well, is well, okay, um, the Barbosa thing too. But, yeah. But the but the but the script is still the same. It's just a different pirate saying the exact same lines. I know, but I, I that's the one thing I do miss is that original pirate at, on the, uh, the the ship, the Wicked Wench. Is that what it was? The Wicked Wench. The ship's name. Yes. Ah, I'm surprised I remembered and that. And going and and uh, okay, and going through the tunnel. You, you may not survive to pass I'm this way. Yeah. yeah, I miss those two old guys. Dead different. man, tell no tales. That, that's still there. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I thought that was a good overlay. Whatever. Okay, let's what go, are we yeah, talking okay, about? Let's Star go, Wars. Let's go back and change uh, change all of that. Let's give let's give a Star Wars overlay to Pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> I think Han Solo would be the best fit. Uh, yeah, he's kind of a pirate. So I hope you don't want to add Luke Skywalker. Why does Pirates of the Caribbean need a whiny bitch? Well, actually, he's already in Pirates of the Caribbean. You just can't see him. Oh yeah, they just haven't shown him yet. Exactly, but uh, I, you know, I from from what I had time to see 
uh, you know, the in, the in the days before Season of the Force officially opened, I just saw Hyperspace Mountain, so I did not get a look inside uh, the la the Star Wars launch bay. I did not see the uh, you know Marvel superhero HQ thing. I did not see the new segment in Star Tours that is on the planet of Jakku, and I guess uh, John Boyega makes an appearance as does BB-8. Aww, yeah. So two characters I don't know if I like or not. Uh, and and how do you know if you haven't seen it yet? Yeah. But you know something, they say it's for a limited time, but this is going to be around for a long time. So there's still plenty of time to see all of this. You, you, I, I'm thinking the Star Wars overlay might be in Tomorrowland for a while, like a year <laughs> at least. I hear it's ending on Tuesday. <laughs> yeah, well, you believe everything <laughs> you read on the Internet. I do. Did you know that Obama wasn't born in America? <gasps> he wasn't. He was no. born in Hawaii. You're right. That's not in America. Oh, is it not? Ah, uh, well, it must be true. A guy on a podcast is telling me. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And we're on a podcast and we deal with nothing but truth. But anyway, you know, about that Star Wars thing. <laughs> Star Wars, yeah. What are we talking about? I don't know. Something because about... We talked so much about Star Wars, I just lose track of what we've talked about already. Did J.J. Abrams ever finish the film? <laughs> oh, hey, yes. Guess what? He just did. Wow. Just um, just like just like what? Like about an hour ago. Uh he called me. He actually hold on. Oh no, he just sent me a text like five minutes ago. What does it say? Oh, I just finished it now, actually. I lied before. Oh, so as of uh twelve thirty two central time, he finished it, man. Nice. Cool. Think it's any good? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, apparently there he made an announcement with Stephen Colbert at a fundraiser that was tied to a, a, an an Omaze, uh, you know, fundraiser, a charity event. To... Omaze always sounds so cool, and then you're like, I'm never. It sounds amazing. Yeah, but it's never going to be you, unless it is. No, no, unless you plunk down a, a buttload of money and get all those extra entries. Um, and we'll talk about that. That's that's coming up uh, in, in a few minutes. But but yeah, I guess uh, when was this? It would have been on November twenty first, so a couple of days ago. Um, he mm -hmm. he said it is officially done, finally, completely done. And to say that less than a month before the the movie releases, um, it either makes you nervous or it makes you really excited that he wait, went to the last possible minute to make sure he got the movie right. Well, honestly, this is not last possible minute. There's a lot of movies that were still being cut like hours before it was supposed to be released. So I think this is actually... If, if you want to use uh, Disney as an example, Fantasia was a movie yeah. that was still being put together just like a day or two before the first print had to arrive for the premiere in New York. <laughs> and nowadays with like the, the, the technology, I mean, with the stuff you're able to do, I mean, it, it, you can get closer to that line, it seems, but, well, God, you, they can do an episode of South Park in a week now. That's nuts. Oh, I know. I, well, that's the great thing about South Park. That's what makes their episodes so edgy and, and so current is they can you know they they can turn around a, a plot line pretty fast so it just stays very you know very current with current events now is is star wars going to lose the excitement because i mean we are so wound up and so excited for the force awakens because it's been so long since we've seen a star wars movie and it's been even longer since we've seen a good star wars movie that I mean, there's never going to be, as long as this franchise continues, there's never going to be more excitement for a Star Wars film than there is right now. I was thinking about that, and that's absolutely true. Um, we have a lot of Star Wars. We've had a lot of excitement for Star Wars. But, but I think the excitement is going to be... Not that there's going to be a lot of excitement for the other films. There's going to be quite a bit. But I think the, the excitement for Star Wars as a whole is going to peak with Episode 7. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's because this is the juncture where it has gone away from George Lucas. This is – what we're being hyped for is not just Episode 7. We're being hyped for the rest of Star Wars. 
like this is the new beginning of Star Wars and everything yes. that comes after it is going to be what we get. Yeah. And so we are excited for this new chapter and the final chapter. I mean, it's going to be a lot of chapters after that. Yes. But once it gets out of George Lucas's hands, now we're in a whole new world. And it is now. You know, speaking of George, he's given a couple of interviews lately. You think a little bitch? Are you sensing a little bit of bitterness? I mean, seriously. Nah, he's butt hurt. He but is. you know what? Screw him. How many billions does he have? It it just it just <laughs> seems that. He he kind of he kind of resents that Disney and J.J. Abrams are are have ad, are admittedly making a movie for the fans, where, and they're not using any of his ideas, and they're not using any of his ideas for episode seven, eight, and nine. I won't hear any any whining from somebody who has three commas to his name. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> You already ruined Indiana Jones with the sequel because you couldn't go back and change the other ones. But <laughs> no, yeah. you know I don't care. He can. It's it had to leave him at some point. We couldn't always just be doing a fan service for George Lucas himself. Yes. Yeah. And I know it's 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 he made a comment to the effect that Star Wars is about like like family drama. It's like a soap opera. It's not just about spaceships. He hey George, spoiler alert. Uh, soap operas are known for being really shitty. <laughs> <laughs> so shut up. Yeah, but to, but at at the height of, of snarkiness, he was doing a real informal interview with Vanity Fair, and they asked him what his favorite Star Wars character was, and he they pauses asked for Star a Wars second. He would like to be. Oh yeah, and he says Jar Jar Binks. I mean, he purposely picks the most reviled character in the Star Wars universe. He's trolling hard, man. He really is. He really is. And I think it's sad. I, I think, you know, J.J. Abrams and so many people connected with the latest film have have bent over backwards to to praise George, to appreciate all the work he did that got us to this point. And he's just crapping all over it. He really is. Well, I mean, I guess in his defense, I mean, how would you feel if your baby... If somebody bought your baby and you're he like, sold hey, it for how many billions of dollars? He's not. Yeah, he can't be upset about it. I don't it. pity him at all. But I'm saying I'm putting myself in his shoes a little bit where I'm just like, if I worked, if I built this whole franchise and I finally sold it and I'm just like, OK, I sold it for a lot of money. But still, you still kind of want to have a little bit of ownership in what you sold. And so you come with a whole bunch of ideas and they thanks, but no thanks you. You're going to be a little butthurt about it. But I think with the money that he was given, maybe keep that to yourself. <laughs> Don't. Yeah, but but hey, Disney made strange magic for him. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> yeah, he just shut up after that one. Who saw that? Exactly. Oh, I think I saw a lot of people. Well, he was even saying that too. You know, they were asking him what kind of movies does he want to make, and and he he wants to kind of go back. He doesn't want to make blockbusters anymore. Which okay, he's he's earned the right to do that. That that was made clear but, a while ago. Yeah, but he said that. Uh, he said that he's going to make movies that people Nobody aren't does. going to see. <laughs> and well, yeah, strange magic already qualified there. So that's awful. That was, do you, did you see that one? I no. <laughs> and so, I mean, I, I realize that I'm passing judgment on a movie I haven't seen, but our, our friend Ron who, who did see it and actually wrote a really, really good review of it, a really good, bad review of it for uh, the mouse castle blog. Uh, I mean, I, I trust Ron's judgment and I, I trust the judgment of the vast majority of of critics out there that pretty much hated the film and everything about it. I mean, I've been kind of on a bad movie kick. I mean, maybe I should put that in. You should. I want to hear about it now. Because I've seen, what have I watched lately? Mac I've and watched, Me. We talked about that Yeah, I watched Mac ago. and Me. I watched Theodore Rex. Oh my God, I saw The Wicker Man with Nick Cage. The Nicolas Cage version. Oh, yeah. That was bad. That was bad in all the best ways, though. It was actually really fantastic. I loved that one. <laughs> okay. Because of that, it was so terribly good. <laughs> it's good to know. So anyway, yeah, George, get over yourself. You have a, have a ton of money and good for you. And nobody likes you. <laughs> and no, And nobody likes you. That's so sad. Um, now, if you would like to go to the premiere of Star Wars The Force Awakens, 
it's coming up December 14th, I believe, in Los Angeles. And I don't recall the, the date that they're doing a London premiere. Do we know where yet? Uh, we don't have an exact location yet. Ugh. And also, I mean, they're, they're still keeping this as secretive as they can up to the last minute. Uh, We're less than a month. Uh, they're, Disney and Lucasfilm are not even screening it for critics ahead of the release. Ooh, it, that's not a good sign. Uh, in this case, it's a great <laughs> sign. I know. If it was any other movie, it would be a bad sign. But they are not taking any chances of too much information leaking out about the movie until right up to the week of the the, the wide release. And if anybody appreciates that, t- appreciates that, Tim, it's me. Thank you. I don't want to. Because you've gone, we, you we talk- have gone so out of your way. I'm actually proud of you. I mean, now I, I've gone out and I've, I've, I've looked at and read, I would say the majority of, of information that has been released out there, but I admire your discipline. You are holding fast to the notion that you're going to, you've seen three trailers. That's enough for you. You're not going any further than that. I have not seen one of the TV spots. Not one. I, I saw just, just tonight. I saw what I, I think this is like the ninth TV <laughs> commercial that's been released. As far, I've, I've seen, I think, a link to five and six. I, I, I link to it. I have not obviously clicked them. Yeah. But no, it, it's been a challenge. Um, but you know what? I, I think I can do it. I've gone this far without seeing one. I've gone this far without listening to the new Adele song. I'm good. I... <laughs> I, I heard the new Adele song. I with, haven't heard that all the way with through. The, uh, with the intro by, what was it? Um, who was it? Richard Attenborough, David Attenborough. Which, which Attenborough was it? The, uh, David Alive. Yes. Did the one who's, I couldn't remember which one was alive. Um, anyway, uh, that I, I did I did see it with that. And, and that was the only thing that made it worth listening to because I'm already sick of Adele. <laughs> I, I put it on Facebook. I'm, I, I'm seriously, I am so adele out from the last go around. There was so much Adele, and I liked Adele. I really did, but I'm st- I, I've had my fill. I love her early stuff. I really, really do. Uh, like you know, nineteen. I mean, I'm not even criticizing the era of Adele. I'm just saying I've had enough. It's just give please. me a couple years, maybe I'll get to this new crap. Okay. No, yeah. but, no, but back to Star Wars. I mean, it's it, it is it's hard to not. Actually, you know, you know what is a lot easier for me than I thought it would be to avoid all seeing all these things because I don't watch a lot of TV and that's not to be pretentious as in one of those people going, I don't own a TV. I watch a lot of TV shows, but it's all online. So I don't see all these commercials and stuff, but I, I really, I, I'm surprised that, that I have this genuine urge to just not watch any of the new stuff. Good for you. Be strong. And, yeah. Keep it up. But it's going to be hard for me because we were talking about this off air that, I mean, I bought my my um, my um tickets for the pre-sale and – which have we talked about that yet? About, about that? buying tickets for the pre-sale? Well, we've talked about the fact that it was next to impossible to get tickets, but now, yeah, now uh, we're talking about the actual viability of, of, of you being able to see it. Now, I, I have my tickets for the evening of the 17th of December. Yeah, but we've uh, talked as, about how much they've made. As do you? Yeah, they have made. Uh, well, actually, yeah, I say. To, I tell you what. Before we before we go to that, let's let's uh, talk about going to the premiere, uh, which is kind of where we started. Oh yeah, <laughs> uh, that's okay. It it, it it's we're, we're all, all over the place, place. The, today and today and and who cares? Um, we're but if you would, man, we, if you're off our game. If you would actually like to go see the premiere of Star Wars: The Force Awakens and meet the cast. Uh, we talked about the fundraiser that they did for Omaze that J.J. Abrams and Stephen Colbert were involved in. Uh, this is a another Omaze fundraiser, and this supports Star Wars Force for Change. And it's going to benefit about 15 different charities that were selected uh, by, I believe, members of the cast. So that, that's kind of cool. But uh, if you go to omaze.com and look for Star Wars Premiere, uh, you can, you know, donate, you know, X amount of dollars and get uh, digital thank you cards and T-shirts and um, art prints and different things like that based on how money, how much money you contribute. And then obviously the more money you contribute, because this is what drives the program, it improves your chances of getting 
drawn to actually attend the uh, premiere. And there's going to be two prizes given given away, one to the London premiere, one to the LA premiere, travel is included. And um, yeah, get on it and good luck to you. On that subject, if you were a cast member of Star Wars and you were, they were told we're doing this Omaze thing, what would your charity of choice be? What would my charity of choice be? What would your charity of choice be? Um. Oh, good lord, that's tough. <laughs> I feel like everybody should have a charity of choice in their back pocket. <laughs> I know. I I shouldn't. I because I'm because I'm really a a selfish, self centered bastard. So I don't have a charity. Off the I top have two. Of my head. Then, if you don't have one, I have two. Okay. My first one, of course, is going to be the Stephen Reynolds Foundation. We nice. started that in honor of my late brother to do re, um, donate money to research for um, viral myocarditis, myocarditis in general. Also doing uh, scholarships for uh, people in uh, my local high school. Uh, the mainstream one I would do though would be um, Make a Wish. Nice. Yeah, I love Make a Wish. I would I'd go work for Make a Wish. <laughs> I wouldn't volunteer my time, but I'd work for them. You are you are far more noble than 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 I am, and my my assignment is to come up with a with a suitable charity for. <laughs> you have to come up with one. You should have one. I should. I, I should. looked up like I, I went to like a, a Make a Wish careers, and I was like, ah, no, I'm not qualified for any of this. <laughs> Actually, okay, okay, it, 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 making it kind of a personal choice. Uh, it would be a, a local establishment, a uh, local charity uh, here in the Las Vegas area. It would probably be Nathan Adelson Hospice. Um, when my mom passed away a number of years ago, uh, she stayed at Nathan Adelson, and they are funded uh, almost entirely by donation. And they provide incredible service and they have a wonderful staff and uh, they were very kind to my mother in her last days. So there. There we go. Mouse right. Castle does charity. I know. And we got, and we managed to be charitable and depressing at the same time. Hey, um, yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, so anyway, so uh, we, let's, uh, now we can move on to the incredibly large amount of money that Star Wars has already made in pre-sale tickets. And here's why, okay, so I'm going George Lucas bitter on this. I'm bitter because I bought my pre-sale ticket for Thursday, December 17th, and now with this work assignment that I'm on, because I'm helping doing some training within the company I'm working for, and I have to kind of oversee the new uh, the new hires that we're having that week. So I haven't looked at the times yet, but there's a very good chance I am not going to be able to see Star Wars for about a week after it opens. <laughs> <laughs> so you know not watching the trailers has been a pretty easy thing for me so far but avoiding the internet for a week is going to be a challenge yeah we, we'll, we'll just have to shut down the show <laughs> until you see the movie i was thinking about that we cannot talk about it <laughs> We oh my god, You're, Tim! I I see, I'll talk about it, and you will just just put your headphones on mute. <laughs> just we're turn the do. volume down. Here's what we're gonna do. We need to. I need to have a copy of this video because I'm not gonna get time for um going to the theater. So we're gonna start a hashtag called Force for Anthony. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's terrible. I like it. <laughs> my schedule. Guys, I need to have a copy of this movie because now my schedule does not allow the time for me to watch it. <laughs> okay, the, your you know your 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 employer needs to get behind this. <laughs> Seriously, because <laughs> I'm thinking of the weird hours that you're working and all your coworkers that are going to be unable to see Star Wars say the opening weekend i just imagine that starting tr like starting to trend force for anthony oh my god what's for is he okay yeah he's just really busy oh, what <laughs> yeah, an he asshole just, <laughs> yeah really, he's just he's just bitter <laughs> you know I, I i can see where he's coming from yes <laughs> let's get him a copy of it yeah there you go so but no they they have made 50 plus million dollars Yes. So this is a In advance sales. This is before like anyone sales. has actually seen the movie. Damn. That's a lot of money. That is. For a I movie mean, nobody's seen. Okay. Uh, Strange Magic didn't even make that much in its entirety. <laughs> it literally made $14.23. Exactly. 
before taxes. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. So, so fifty million dollars. So I mean, it's how okay. How big of an opening weekend are we talking? Okay, this is just pre. This is just pre-sale. There are more tickets that are going to be sh sh sold day of. Um, I mean, how much money is Star Wars going to take in opening weekend? I mean, is there is there a number <laughs> out there? I mean, five hundred million. It's going to be enough to make Bill Gates blush. I'm thinking, enough to make George it's, Lucas blush. It's going to be enough to make James Cameron punch a hole in a wall. <laughs> He's going to be knocked off number one and two. He it, right? Open. I mean, it's got it's got to be That's the, a given, it's, right? It's going to be the Avatar, biggest right? opening weekend worldwide box office uh, opening weekend definitely ever. Will it be the number one movie ever? Will it? Will yep, it beat Avatar? It is. It's going to beat Avatar. I hope so. I hope no. so because Avatar doesn't deserve to be at the top of that list. No, it it's going to be it's going to beat Avatar. If it does not beat Avatar, what's something I can do? Because I'll do it. <laughs> oh no, we'll think about that. You know, and we can do this as part of the force for Anthony hashtag hashtag put put down what Anthony. Anthony has to do. Force for Anthony if Star Wars: The Force Awakens doesn't become the number one movie at the box office all time it has to right it has to it really has to i mean and, and i will acknowledge that there are people out there who don't like star wars but there are enough people who do like star wars that are going to line up to see this movie repeatedly it's it's got to it's got to be a done deal when's the last time you heard of any movie making a whole lot of money on pre-sales uh, th well, it, it surpassed, uh, I think the Hunger Games had the record for the most presale tickets. Speaking of which, Hunger Games? It, it passed, it passed that in a matter of days. <laughs> Speaking of Hunger Games, I, 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 I was in the same conundrum last year at this time, but I found myself trying to avoid spoilers for Hunger Games, even though I've read the books. The books are out. Books. <laughs> <laughs> Anthony, there are books. I did that with Hunger Games. I did that with the movie Lincoln, where I was like, I'm trying to avoid spoilers when I know exactly what happens. You did it with Titanic, too, didn't you? The boat sinks, Anthony. I'm sorry. Whoa. Mind blown. <laughs> Probably that's what the government wants you to think. <laughs> you know, it's really, yeah, it's really weird when you know the story and trying to avoid spoilers for it, and you realize, oh, no, I'm just a dumbass. So, uh... Getting away from Star Wars news. <laughs> yeah. Here's a bit primer. of news that I know you're not happy about. I am not happy about this. Um, so I'm eating food. Um, what are we eating? Or what are you eating? I am eating It's these watermelon sour gummy sharks. How does that go with your wine? <laughs> well, it's a white wine, so very well, actually. Oh, very good. Okay. <laughs> Nice. It's a Sauvignon Blanc. It uh, goes well with these, um, whatever they are. I wasn't anticipating them being so chewy. Um, no, but um, chewy. Alex... We're all... <laughs> um, so my room next door is one of my uh, trainees. <laughs> They're like, what the hell? <laughs> what the hell's going on in that room? Um, no, Alex Hirsch, creator of um, my favorite Disney Channel show of all time, and I'm part of that... Um, era that's nostalgic all over even Stevens and Xenon of the whatever. Um, Gravity Falls, man. It's coming, coming to an to end, it, man. After two seasons. Um, and, and Alex Hirsch has made it abundantly clear this is his choice. He went on his Tumblr. Um, and he had even talked about it a while back that he was kind of alluding to that it was going to end. But... Man. And and really it took it a long time to get to this point because I mean this is only season 2 and I remember talking to Alex Hirsch at the D23 Expo 2 years ago about the end of season 1. <laughs> so it season 2 was kind of drawn out. Yeah. It was like part 1 part 2. So essentially I think you could really count the later half of season 2 to be season 3 the way it was kind of released. Yes. But I mean, yeah, I think what, like forty episodes total, something like that. Yeah, forty episodes, seventeen shorts. And actually, I was on Reddit today, and um, Guillermo del Toro actually came out saying that this is a huge loss. 
So wow. Guillermo del Toro is a fan of Gravity Falls. He needs to direct the movie. <laughs> no, he doesn't. He needs to work Gravity Falls character into the characters into the Haunted Mansion movie. Oh my god, I just want that movie so bad. <laughs> With Ryan Gosling. Justin Mulligan on the Eddie Murphy. Yes, no, no Eddie Murphy. That's what? a great nap movie, though. I think I've said that before. If you ever want a nap, put on Haunted Mansion. Yeah, uh, very much so. I can't fall asleep watching anything, but that movie, I was out like a light. See, uh, Pirates of the Caribbean 4 is like that for me. <laughs> I, I, oh my word. I made it through that movie once. I haven't fallen asleep during it. I've just gotten up and found something better to do. So let's see. So so what they're going to do is the second to the last episode is going to air like today, tonight on Disney XD. I have a few, I have a few and then there's going to be a series finale, but they haven't announced when that's going to be released. Ah, oh, man. So so is it so we're going to get like an extended episode or are they going to do it like they did with Phineas and Ferb and do like, you know, like an hour long episode to close it out? We don't know. It's just it's such a well established universe. No, I know. I mean just I mean such great characters and such weird goings on and so but original I, and I, so clever and there's a there's a there's a code to solve at the end of every episode. I love that. And there's a whole messed up world of um, fan fiction out there. Oh yeah, and and you love that it it's also symbolically linked to Rick and Morty. <laughs> yes, Rick and Morty. There's a scene where it, it it connects the two universes, and it makes me so happy because the episode that if you watch Rick and Morty, there's a part of like a lit like seriously like one or two frames. But it's something that happens in Gravity Falls, like, maybe a few months later. So this whole thing is set up in Rick and Morty. Then you see exactly what happens watching um, Gravity Falls a few months after that. Oh, I love and stuff the, like that. I love those little Easter eggs, yeah. But no, it's going to be... It's a bummer. It that is. It's such a quality show. And, and Disney Channel, they really... But between Nickelodeon, Disney Channel, and Cartoon Network, as far as quality things for like adults and kids, Disney Channel usually comes in third on that. Um, I agree. I agree. Yeah. Yeah, and like even as a kid growing up, I wanted Nickelodeon. I didn't want Disney Channel, and I love Disney even from a kid. So it's going to be a shame that to see a really good quality animated series leave disney yeah and and really i mean it seems like you know there's uh they always manage to have at least one so i mean you had finish and ferb which i love finish and ferb and it had a good run and then you've got gravity falls um but uh, yeah what's left <laughs> um a lot of people um are behind um Oh, you know what? That's Cartoon Network, so never mind. I was looking at uh, Steven Universe, but that's Cartoon Network. Okay. Actually, uh, one that I, that, that I kind of like that's fun is uh, Star and the Forces of Evil with the, with the female protagonist. That's kind of fun. That's kind of that's quirky. I mean, it's, 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 kinda, it's kind of loud and erratic, like a lot of you know, modern mm. day animation is. But wh when it's on, it's really clever. Um, now, our friend uh, Jennifer, um, who lives in Arizona, turned me on to the real the show. I don't know if it's crappy or genius. I think it lies somewhere in between pickle and peanut. I have not seen it yet. I have heard it is about it. I don't even know, man. It is a mess. <laughs> it, it's weird. It is so messed up, and I don't know how I feel about it. I. It has shades of trying too hard is my thing. Okay. It's trying too hard to be a weird kind of random show. Mm -hmm. um, doesn't even, I mean, good or not, doesn't come close to Gravity Falls. Gravity Falls is a league of its own. Oh, I agree. It, it, Gravity There's Falls no is baseball. so well conceived and so well written. That's what I love about it. Yeah, it's not a lot of times that you'll get a children's show with its own world its own continuity it's its own puzzles to put together i mean it's a whole universe yes it's nuts it's, it's awesome. bananas and we're gonna miss it b-a-n-a-n-a-s oh so much that shit is bananas 
Rest in peace, Gravity Falls. I really want to view... I want to visit that universe again, though. I don't care. I mean, I do care. But if Gravity Falls ends, I just don't want our visits to Gravity Falls to be done altogether. It'll be around in repeats for a while. I, I just hope for a few last-minute kind of movies. Yeah. Maybe just a made version. Yeah. You know, just something in that universe. I want to revisit that. I don't want to be done going there. I agree. And so I hope there's something on the horizon that we just don't know about yet. I know. Fingers crossed. Getting back to the parks, because Disneyland always comes with up with a way to suck money out of you when they have a good thing going. Uh, you can now get Paint the Night Parade dining packages. Of course you can. I'm surprised we don't have them yet. Which will give you preferred seating at uh, at a location on Main Street where you can see the Paint the Night Parade. It's not going to be a va- it's not going to start until January 11th. Surprisingly, uh, the day after the whole west side of the park closes to make way for the Star Lord Wars Land expansion. You almost said Star Lord. Did I almost say Star? It could be Star. I would go. I would go to Star Lord Land. I would do that. I would say that. I would go there. Uh, but anyway, yeah, January 11th is when that's supposed to start. They haven't announced when you can actually order the uh, the dining packages, like you know, just in the same manner as you can with Fantasmic. Which, yeah, we you know this does make sense. Of course, they're going to do uh, a dining package because the Fantasmic dining packages are going away because there's no Fantasmic. Oh, there we go. Wow. So they like got... when we figure things out live. I know. It's <laughs> like, oh, I read the article. Aha, light bulb just went off. Uh, but yeah, I guess you can do dining packages with Blue Bayou, and they have not announced yet when you'll actually be able to um, make your reservation, but that's coming soon. So Here's the next question. What? Do you think they're going to find a way to adopt the, the fast pass system for um, Fantasmic to paint the night? No, no. And and I think that uh, a, a similar question was posed on the Disney Parks blog. And the, the answer was no, you can still basically, you know, camp out on Main Street and, you know, find your prime location to see it. I just saw that right now. Yeah. Thank you, Aaron Glover. Thank you, Aaron. That. And thank you, Danny Glover, too. Oh, and Donald Glover. Yes. From oh, NBC's okay. community, Childish Gambino. Let's get them all. Because the internet. Yeah. So yeah, that's um you guess do we say that's gonna happen at the uh we get three entrees. It's a three course meal. Yeah, it's a three course meal. It's a big deal. Huh. And it looks like Blue Bayou and Aladdin's Oasis is where those are happening, right? Right. Oh, and the it's gonna be located near it's a small world will be your viewing location for that, which makes sense. It kind of like a VIP section set up at one point for that. That'll work. So yeah, that's such a cool parade. It is. It is. It is a very neat parade. I'll go along with that. And I, and I like how the music kind of ties in with the electrical parade. So, well done, Disney. Too bad it wasn't originally at Disneyland. Had to steal uh, that from Hong Kong. If you've never seen it before, it's new to you. It's nude to you. <laughs> <laughs> I see what you did there. Right. So I hear tell that uh, Animal Kingdom may actually one day become a full day park. <laughs> Doubtful. Well, they're trying to beef up the nighttime activities at the park. and Oh, so visit it at the later half of your day. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's really uh, what well, they're doing. And this, is the, and this is preceding Avatar Land, which is supposed to open in, what, 2017. Uh, but sometime in the spring of next year, Rivers of Light, the nighttime spectacular, is coming to Disney's Animal Kingdom. And it sounds like it's going to have like elements of Fantasmic and World of Color, borrowing from a lot of their show elements and technology to create this whole magical light show. At it, Animal Kingdom. They are very, very much overdue on this, though. Um, oh, seriously, yes. I, um, I know that they have had... I mean, they close early. I mean, six between 6 and 8, they usually close. Um, I think they have a couple days coming up um, where they're closing at, like, 5. But, I mean, to me, a Disney park needs to have some sort of nighttime show. And they're finally getting one. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and they're going to throw elements of Tangled in there, too, because there's going to be, like, 
floating lanterns or something. Oh, by the way, did you see um, our friends uh, Lisa and Tim went to a um, lantern festival in Albuquerque? I saw that. That was really cool. And I, and I kept wanting to sing at last I see the light. They played it was that beautiful. There, apparently. Very cool. Which of course I highly approve. Yes, it was gorgeous. It really was. It was it was quite lovely. So yeah, I mean this park op- opened almost twenty years ago and they God nineteen ninety eight this park opened, Animal Kingdom. Does not seem that long. No, it doesn't. That is crazy. Um and it took them this long to get a nighttime show. Yep. Like, I still consider this to be the baby park, but, God, even California Adventure opened up after this stateside, obviously, and we've had a few Asia parks open, I guess, but... Yeah. Um, so, yeah, yeah River of, yes. Rivers of Light. Yeah, and they're and I guess they're going to do all sorts of uh, lighting effects, projection effects on the Tree of Life, and it's, it's all kind of, I guess, the, it's, you know, it's the springboard for more bigger, more beautiful entertainment at Animal Kingdom and once again leading up to Pandora, the Avatar Land experience opening up in 2017. And they're adding, like, they're doing a lot more nighttime things. They're even talking, I heard, about a um, like a nighttime Kilimanjaro safari introducing hyenas yes. into the park, which would be, I guess, interesting. I don't know. Do something yeah, I at night, I guess. I don't know. Anyway. Well, you know what's going away? At uh, Disney World, something overdue for going away. Yeah, Captain EO's going bye bye. There we go. They're making it official. It closes down for good, I believe, on December sixth. That's what they said before. Yeah, that's at uh, that's at Disney World. At uh, where's that? I mean, where's it showing now? It's at Epcot. Epcot, now. the um, Imagination Pavilion. Yeah, that's it. Um, I guess this is long overdue. And it's going to be replaced Hooter. by a uh, by a Disney and Pixar short film festival that's going to take existing short cartoons. I think Disney this is and stupid. Pixar and turn it into a 4D experience. So all those movies, all those little short films that you can see at home if you own the DVD and Blu-rays of your favorite Disney and Pixar films, you can see on the big screen while they probably when they say 4d experience they probably spray water in your face right that's my thinking <laughs> God, so you can see that but uh, but that's yeah but that's that's going to be coming to uh, epcot soon now this article says it makes it sound like that that captain eo is still somehow destined to continue at disneyland but it it's not going to as long as path of the jedi is still at the the theater in tomorrowland do you think and, 3D movies have killed whatever they would ever do in those areas? Because 3D is not a novelty anymore. Well, it kind of is, but it's... No, it's, it, it depends. If you have you know the more interactive element like you do with, like in A Bug's Land with the bugs crawling under your seat and things poking you in the back and stuff like that. So I guess in that respect, you can still do it. I, I, I know I have said this a million times, and I'll say it a million times again. I miss Honey, I Shrunk the Audience. You you really, really want that back, don't you? I really want that back. Um, not like, I don't want it back full time. I, I just want them to bring it back like they did with Captain EO, just so I could have a chance to actually say goodbye. Okay, or, or really even kind of like still having Carousel of Progress at the Magic Kingdom at Walt Disney World, just for nostalgia's sake. Because, yeah, Disney does not really, unless it's like a cornerstone, they don't afford a lot of space for nostalgia. Once something's gone, it's gone. They don't bring it back. Um, mm-hmm. So, which is why Captain EO was such an exception to that rule. I, I well, they were they were capitalizing on, you know, the sudden interest in Michael Jackson a year after he died. And, and... Uh, honey, I shook the audience. Well, it was getting dated. So I mean, it was, it was, it was smart that they did what they did. And I hate to say it, but they were probably kind of glad that they had that excuse to do it. I don't know. They should get Rick Moranis out of retirement. Oh man! And do like Honey, I Shrunk Grandpa. <laughs> honey, I shrunk the audience again. I'd be happy with. Um, yeah. But no, I mean, it was. It, it's a good show. 
and I, I still think Honey Shrunk the Audience is a fantastic show, but for the immersion that ta- it took for the audience, it was dated. Um, I mean, you couldn't fully immerse yourself into that experience without realizing that this is now in the 2000s and we're going back to the 90s. I agree. Um, I agree. Unless, unless they introduce some sort of time travel element in the pre-show. Bring back Honey, I Shrunk the Audience for three months and I'll be happy. And then we can okay. move on to whatever it is. That'll give you that'll give you time to go down there and see it and then not have to see it ever again. Yep. Uh, I mean I won't be happy I'll never see it again, but I'd be more satisfied than I am right now. Do you think there's anybody else like you that really would like to have that show back? <laughs> it it's Disney. There's weirdos in every corner. That's true. <laughs> Bring back rocket rods. Oh wait, that's you too. I d- <laughs> I liked rocket rods. Um I didn't okay, I didn't I wasn't a huge fan of Rocket Rods, but I didn't mind Rocket Rods better than nothing. No, I, I still think nothing is better than Rocket Rods. No, it's not. It's absolutely not. The, the 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 track, the whole loading area, just sitting there derelict doing nothing. No, you, you need something going on up there. The 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 queue was ridiculous. It didn't oh, the queue was ridiculous. That, that was space. the stupidest queue in the world. Oh, we're gonna go to LAX next. Oh shut up. <laughs> And then, yeah, and then you go into the Circle Vision 360 room and you go round and round and round in the switchbacks in the queue there while they show old Disney cartoons on the screens. Do you know what's ridiculous is I was 10 years old at the time and I still remember going through that vividly. (laughs) I do. I remember that. things that stay with you. I mean, it's kind of cool to think about now that you got to walk through this entire area that is now a ride. Um, But... Yeah, no, that the line was too ridiculous for it. They took a 20 minute experience and tried to shove it down to what, three minutes? Yeah, see, see, People Mover was classic. People Mover was the best. Do you think Tomorrowland 98 was the biggest yes. mistake of <laughs> Disney theme parks? Yes. Yeah. I mean, even yeah. more so I, I, than. I, 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 okay, you know something? I, I'll, 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 I'll qualify that. It was. The the concept of the tomorrow that never was and the whole Jules Verne, you know, we'll 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 make it, you know, we'll make it look, give it that kind of steampunk futuristic look. Discovery Land of Disneyland Paris essentially is what they're going for, it seems. Yeah, I don't think it was a bad idea. I think it was horrible execution. Horribly executed. And I think the whole downfall of the whole thing can be summed up in two words. Banked turns. They wouldn't spend the money to improve the people mover track. If they would have banked those turns, we'd probably still have rocket rods to this day. Yeah. And it's... yeah, because it was, oh my God, it was making the, the brakes burn out. They could, <laughs> not, the, the ride vehicles didn't work half the time. I, t- I talked to, uh, to a few of our friends um, and, and what I, what I had, uh, gathered was that a lot of like the, the pass holders love to go on rocket rods because they knew it was going to break down and they'd get a readmit pass and they would take it to Indiana Jones. <laughs> and that was okay. the primary purpose of that ride. Those sly devils. I am really glad, though, that I got a chance to go to uh, Tomorrowland 98. As horrible as it was, sometimes you just want to say you experienced something. And never had to experience it again. <laughs> no. But, God, that, I mean... Tomorrowland still hasn't caught up with it. It's recovering. No, no. Now it's Star Wars Land. What's what is going to happen to Tomorrowland when Star Wars leaves and goes to Star Wars Land? Well, they got three years to plan this thing, so let's hope they do something right. Better get it right. Would you be opposed to them tearing down Innoventions building? No. No. Nah. I think the building has has more than served its purpose, but there's it, it needs something fresh there yep. something entirely new save the utopia save the subs but do something in the footprint where uh, where interventions slash star wars launch base slash superheroes hq is we need a more of a marvel presence we need a marvel ride we can do that the west coast can't we yeah now is is th- there are there still restrictions on iron man because they're doing an iron man ride in what hong kong, hong kong. or tokyo yeah but I, I think there's still issues with licensing in the u.s so we won't be getting a an iron man ride i thought that was limited future. to world 
because of the uh, Marvel area in um, at Universal Studios. Yeah, I, 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 I well, you know, and, and now that I said that, duh, of course they can do Iron Man there because they had all the armor on display. So yeah, maybe it is just limited. Is to that still Europe. there? That has to be still there, right? At the new. Uh, Marvel I HQ? have I have not gone inside yet. I believe so because it's taking up one floor and then Star Wars Launch Bay is taking up the other. So the the meet and greet is still there and yeah, it's it, it has to be there. And if it's and if it's not, I, I stand corrected and our listeners who may be at the park right now, please tell me if I'm full of crap. <laughs> Which they'll tell me anyway, but Oh yeah, they tweet it all the time. Yeah. Hashtag fourth for Anthony. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag Tim's full of crap. And that will do it for this edition of Inside the Mouse Castle. Don't forget to visit us at themousecastle.com, on Facebook at facebook.com slash the mouse castle, and of course on Twitter at Inside the MC. And we are also on Instagram, Tumblr, and Pinterest. And feel free to subscribe to us on iTunes, Stitcher, and SoundCloud. So does this mean we're back on doing uh, Monday shows? Yeah, I think for the next few weeks with my work schedule, I apologize. I mean, it's my schedule that's the fluid one. Um, but yeah, for at least until mid-December, we'll be doing Monday shows, I think. It right. works for me. And I, for you? And I hate it when you get fluid all over the studio when we're recording. Yeah, it's inevitable. I get too yeah. excited. <laughs> and you just can't hide it. I'm about to lose control, Tim. I mean, you know what? I think I like it. All right. And with that, we will see you a week from now, next Monday, for another edition of Inside the Mouse Castle. See ya. See ya.